I mean, it starts with family. If you don't have family, you have nothing. I can honestly say this is where my love for football started. You know, I knew early that he was special, knew he would have a shot to, to do something big. I was happy for him because his dream had came true. You recruit a player from your own hometown, you don't want to see the guy fail. That's who he is. He's going to find a way one way or the other. Even it may not look like he's going to. He's not, not looking good, he's going to find a way. I said, Nate, you have a story to tell. You know, most successful people have a story to tell. And you are one of them. I am Miata Little, known as Mimi, B-Rob's oldest sister. I'm Alvin and they're the chipmunks. <laughs> you gotta take care of your own. You got to, if you, I mean, it starts with family. If you don't have family, you have nothing. Soul Food Sunday! I am Kimberly Little. I am Brian Robinson's mother from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, born and raised. We don't have a big family, but we got a small family, kind of close-knit. If you know in the back of your mind that you have that support from your family, I feel like it makes you go harder. What's up, man? I'm Devaris Jones, b Rob's cousin. There's no, there's no difference, man. He the same guy on and off the field, with and without the camera. Same guy, he's always been be raw. Take off. Just a little stroll in the park. This was all like, um, like my little league practice field. I get off the bus right in front of my grandma's house, like right over here. I still got my boys and girls club right here. That's why I used to walk from my grandma's house and hang out over here at the boys and girls club. I can honestly say this is where my love for football started because I was able to come here. We played football often. When he was young, he was just always just bigger than the average child, stronger than the average child, just the body build. I decided to start putting him in sports and he started like football five years old. That was probably the first time I learned how to play uh, high ball. It's when you, you throw the ball up in the air, whoever come down with it, got to take off and run. So literally everybody else that's on the field, they gotta come and get you. They gotta, they gotta be the ones to tackle you. And I kind of grew my love for the game, just getting slammed on and beat up on, you know, out here in the grass in the field. It had me ready for when I just go to football practice. I'd be ready because, you know, I'm already out here playing ball with, with these people. But he was always oversized, no matter what league he played in, they always wanted to see birth certificates and Especially when it comes to playoffs, it was like, there's no way that guy is six, seven, eight. We did it for years. Nine, the way he's running all those kids. We always played against each other now. Like even Pee Wee football, we always played against each other. He's always been the guy on the field. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy to see him like just, you know. <laughs> I don't even know what to say, man. It's crazy to see him, like, um, you know, evolve into, you know, who he is today. Come on. So this road kind of actually lead right to my grandma's house. Yeah, so this was just, like, an open parking lot at first. All this was, it was just a big parking lot. Like, wow, this is my home right here. Like, this is why I used to walk up and down these same streets every day. And none of it is the same because the tornado destroyed <laughs> so Bryant and south of university get to a safe place right now the city limits of tuscaloosa be in a safe place right now don't take any chances with this right here is them this 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 is where the house was at 
So, as you can see, the house gone. So, you know, it don't really feel the same when I come over here no more because it's like, I can't see the house that I really grew up in. So one of my best friends stayed on that main avenue. Once his mom sent me home, I jogged all the way down this strip right here. It was one long road. I jogged all the way down here. I got down here to the house right here. So when I got into the house, the house was right here. I got in, got settled. You know, I was talking to my fam for like two or three minutes, just sitting in the house. Next thing you know, tornado start, you know, destructing, doing everything. And, uh, you know, we were just laying in the house on the floor at the time. When everything happened, we were in the house. And when we walked outside, it was just like, it was like something out of a movie. The houses that was across the street from us, this whole, this whole lane of houses that went all the way down this street was obviously destroyed. You had people running up and down the street that couldn't find their family members that they were just in the same house with. By the time we get all the way around to the main street, then we see all these families on the same avenue, standing out on the middle of the street, uh, asking for help. Everybody really pulled together as, as a community. It, it, it was great. This is how it is here, man. Like, even if, even if we're not related, you know what I'm saying? But if we done been through some stuff together, man, or, or if I just got a, you know, if I got love for you, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just, we just go to bat for, you know, each other, man. It's just how it always been. I just, I hope, I hope, I hope I can add that same type of impact on somebody from my community, maybe, you know, that's seen me speak or talk or seen me in action around here. And, you know, they get an opportunity to go up and do the same things I got a chance to do. <laughs> Not yet. I keep doing what I'm doing. I might be one day. Robinson pounds his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Ryan Robinson makes it a scoring drive. My name is uh, Greg Guy. Uh, I am the office coordinator at Hillcrest High School in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, I was Brian Robinson's running backs coach uh, while he was when he was in high school. Obviously, he's my my first uh, NFL player uh, that I ever coached. Um, only NFL player I've ever coached so far. Hopefully, it's gonna be a few more. But uh, he's the he's the first, so that's always gonna be special. Character, character determine the type of person you are. I mean. You know, don't nobody want to, you know, work with or be around nobody with bad character. You know, you got to have, you know, great character in order to be a team or to work with other people. So you want to be the best version of yourself when you're working with other people and, you know, when you're surrounding yourself around other good people because that's how, you know, you create the energy that you need in the room for everybody to be successful. Probably what makes me more proud of anything is, is the man that he is, you know, the person that he is, um, how much he cares about people, people, his family, how much he still cares about them. I mean, the fact that he comes to Tuscaloosa on a Friday and has a camp for four hours to help the little kids around here that, you know, Brian Robinson is a god to them. So I always come back and check in. Anytime I'm, I'm home, you know, I always just come by and so say, I just, just want to continue to be you know, a positive role model, give them positive influence, you know, so that they can try to, you know, reach for the best. Or if football is their dream, I gave them the vision to see it and believe that they can do it and to go for it. To get to to get to see him accomplish those things that I know he's wanted his whole life, uh, and then to just know how much it mattered to him and much it, it, he values it makes it even you know more special for me. So. Uh, over 
and think back to when he walks in here as a, as a ninth grader and, and you know, he was always, obviously we knew he was special then. And he was a big dude. Uh, he came walking in and, and we were, uh, we were pretty good that year. Um, we were, uh, it was actually, that was actually my first year here. As he went through middle school, I was like, okay, he was very dominant through middle school and he hit ninth grade first year, you know, played varsity, came in starting. So, you know, mainly I say like ninth grade, I was like, okay, we might be on this song. Hey, that's a big Ohio State fan right there. He said, I'm going to Ohio. Hey, I ain't mad at him, look. Cause when I was when I was his age, when I was his age, I always said that I was going to Alabama. And the fact that you you believe that you're going to Ohio State and that's the place you want to go, you keep that in your mind every single year that you out doing stuff like this, and you just get closer and closer to that dream. His junior year of high school, they used to go crazy. Right to the 40, the 30, the 20. The 10, touchdown, Hillcrest. It hit the field, it was B Rob, B Rob, B. Yeah. Junior year, they were already calling. No, we want him here. And we started getting all the office letters. I was like, we want him here, we want him here. So I knew then it, it, it was happening. Ryan Robinson, this time, he takes it and he will. I remember the week after, uh, he broke the state rushing record. That was when it really went crazy around here. He ran for 447 yards uh, against Clay Chalkville on a Friday night. In 72 hours, uh, he got six SEC offers. He was like as blown away as anybody. It's hard to explain just how much self-confidence he has. And he's not, I wouldn't call him arrogant, I wouldn't call him cocky, I wouldn't call him that, but I think every great player knows they're good. You always want to go to Alabama, but for a while throughout his high school, Alabama hadn't really hadn't shown a lot of interest. Alabama hadn't offered, and then they did. Been here to uh, find my name yet? Mm, it's right here. So really, they only uh, engrave your name. They engrave your name for um, national championships. So I got two little engravements on the um, Walker Champions. I know this one guy that knew some coaches at Alabama. He was like, y'all should come out and see this guy, you know? And then they came out and, you know, they started getting interested and started, you know, look, put more attention on him. I felt like he had the potential to really go anywhere because he was just like swimming and recruiting letters like the mail. It was so much mail every day, they couldn't even put it in the mailbox. I think the one from Alabama really like caught his attention, so. Turning to Alabama was a, a, a big and bold move at the time for how crowded it was, and how many backs it was at the time, and coming in in the same recruiting class as the number one back in my class. So it was just something I believed in from the beginning. And just went with it. For one, it was a great relief because it was a full ride. <laughs> I was like, thank God. But it was like, I was happy for him because he, his dream had came true. This is not the end. This is the beginning. And for the fourth time in seven years, the Alabama Crimson Tide is the champion of college football. Steps past Paul Bryant with his seventh national championship. All he cares about is winning and that's all he's done. That dude's the greatest coach of all time. All right. Bright lights, man. Sure you're used to it, right? Show you all the rings I got. Starting right here. This is my ring collection. Start at right here. I got this one. I got that one. That one. That one. That one. That one. 
So we count as one, two, three, four, five, seven. Got seven. B Rob was somebody that we looked at for a long time. And, you know, one of the things that you always want to do when um, you recruit a player from your own hometown is you don't want to see the guy fail. These are the big gold trophy right here. I held two of these up, this one and that one. Like he said, he told he says himself, when I was eight years old, I'm going to Alabama and I'm on and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. And you know, there were some times where I wasn't sure that that was what was gonna happen. Like I had to set out in my mind, you know, it was something that I was working for ever since I was eight, nine, 10, 11 years old, right here. And um, the first time I was able to put that jersey on with my name on it and actually run out of there, I realized that, you know, dreams are real. To see him get to do that and to know how much it meant to him, to know how much it meant to his family, uh, for him to run out of that tunnel in his hometown, uh, for his for his hometown team that he's wanted to play for since he was a little kid. You know, they, they don't get any better than that. I didn't really, like the first time I ever came, probably I was like eight years, seven, eight years old for a football game, but before ever stepping in this locker room, um, I probably think I got a chance to step in here um, in like ninth, ninth grade. My first time ever seeing the locker room. That was way before it looked like this though. Yeah, I forgot the wind right here. Got to touch that wind bar. For show me right there. This was right before I got here. It was as soon as I got here and one year before I left. So it stretched out. I won one every, every every other year. I won one. I ain't on this wall, but I play with a lot of these people though. I play with all of them. It's a lot of talent for real. He's never been in a position where he had to wait. So, you know, he really haven't didn't have a problem with waiting. It was just the time and kept looking like he just wasn't gonna never get his time. You know, he, he just said like, like, I just gotta wait my time. I gotta wait my time. And, you know, yeah, I mean, there were thoughts and conversations of is this, should I do something else? Should I think about something else? But I don't think that confidence in himself ever, ever wavered. I, ne I never saw it. But, you know, he did contemplate a few times, but then he was like, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, see it through. I chose to come here, so I'm gonna, you know, see it through. The perseverance is one of the things that is important to being successful, because I don't think you can improve if you don't think there's something that you can do better. Who you gonna be? You know, are you gonna be the guy that everybody says, oh yeah, I remember that guy, because he, he had a lot of ability, but, or are you gonna be the guy that just kept pushing, kept pushing, kept pushing, and when it was time to get his chance, you're gonna take advantage of it. You, you know, you go out there and you just give it your all, you know, and go it's time. And when it's your time, you know, you just be ready. Just be ready. The way it all went down at right here. Five years. It was a transition. What we try to get our guys to focus on here is not what team you're on, not even how much you're going to play, but what do you have to do to develop? If you have that mindset, and that's part of the culture here, then you're gonna go out there and improve every day. And hey, we got a lot of good players, but the competition makes you better. Everybody four and five stars on the whole roster. Anybody who competing to play, four stars and five stars. Najee Harris, running back, Alabama. It's gonna get hard, like, especially those first years, the first couple years. Every year that I was there and I wasn't, you know, playing or getting on the field as much, I was coming in there, practicing, competing, preparing as if, you know, when I got a shot or when I got a chance to be the guy, that I was going to be the guy. Regardless of how long it took, it took an extra two, three, maybe even four years to, to be that guy. But when my number was called to be that guy, I left no doubt that I had, you know, 
did all the right things out of all my time there and prepared and, you know, sharpened my craft, you know, in order to you know, have myself ready to have one of the best seasons of my life. Fun part about it was the relationships we built around so much talent, so much talent and pride in one room. And we found a way to, you know, get along with each other, connect with each other, win games with each other, and have fun with each other for real. All right, look, 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 let me tell y'all something. Cause we can't, we can't do this while we up in uh, Washington. When is your birthday? Tuscaloosa Water Park. You going to, you going to cold tub. I don't care if you a staff, the head coach, assistant coach, starting quarterback. Talk crap. You have never thrown Nick Saban in that cold tub on Because he ain't never slipped through there. You're talking like you threw the head coach in there. You and I both know that didn't happen. Hey, look, 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 look. He ain't never slipped through. You know, the guys that persevere, stick with it, and even though they may be disappointed that they're not getting us to play as much as they like, they contribute to the team however they can. And B-Rob did that in his junior season when he wasn't playing as much as he wanted to. And But then he made a decision that I'm going to come back and I'm going to have a great year because I'm going to have a better opportunity. And he did that um, with flying colors. You need a bar in the cut, barbershop. Who want to play me? Who want to play me? I feel like I done always ended up surrounding myself with a great coaching staff or some great coaches that really cared about me and where where I was trying to go, you know, um, on this football journey. I done ran into a lot of great people who I felt like cared about me and my success. And I appreciate them. I wish I could name them all. But it's a lot. You know, he had a great season here. I think the thing I admire about him most is his toughness um, and his tenacity uh, as a player and a competitor. Um, you know, he's hard to tackle, and I don't think people wanted to tackle him. Gets it out to Brian Robinson, a move and a touchdown. Alabama, Brian Robinson into the clear. in Destin, Florida, man. We was like, man, I'm like, Cub, man, they gonna call your name second round, man. He like, man, we gonna hope so. I went up to uh, my room and just, you know, kicked back, relaxed, and just, you know, just re reflecting. It was like one of the last four or five picks on that day. We wanna make you a Washington commander. You all right with that? Yes, sir. <laughs> Waited long enough. He just stand up. I'm like, yeah, that's the call right there. I start recording. I head downstairs as soon as I heard the coach. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't even say anything when I came down the steps. We seen him come down the stairs. I was looking. I was like, he walk around the table. I said, he finna get a hat. He grabbed the hat. He looked at the TV. And it was like the commander select Brian Robinson. He put the hat on. It was just crazy, man. My heart. It was just a. It was just the you know heart feeling moment, man. I remember the hard times. I do. Uh, that's that's probably when I when I heard his name called, that's what I thought back to was the hard times, the times when you're right, he he wasn't sure. You know, it, it feels the same way. I had to kind of think back to those those times when I was at Alabama when I had to be patient. You know, when I really didn't want to. Sometimes, you know, tonight, you know, when I just you know kind of waiting on the call, and you know, just like, am I hanging there? And he asked me, was I hanging in there? And I was like, I guess so. I was like, I guess I am. All my dreams are coming true. Like, you know, I'm about to be playing in the NFL. You got that album. <laughs> <laughs> you got that album. Ready? 
<laughs> it was exciting, you know. Uh, he was a guy that we had targeted. And uh, a lot of times, you know, guys don't fall, things don't fall the way you would want them to. Um, and so when when we did get him, I was so excited. Yeah. Yeah. Because I saw a guy that, you know, runs with um, just this this energy and this relentlessness, you know, um, that could really help our team. Look out at Alabama, Brian Robinson, his first carry up the middle. St sticks that foot in there, square pads, and grinds it up. Okay, that's a great job. Robinson here's Robinson out of the backfield. Get the ball in his hands, we score, we break up the band. Is Robinson and he is in for a commander's touchdown. Yeah, baby. That's what I am talking about. He had shown us so much and, and, and showed us his value so early that you know we were looking at starting him in, in week one. We had had a, a staff meeting earlier that, that, that afternoon. And when we finished it, I went over to Coach Jordan's office and uh, we were actually talking about Brian and, and, and looking at his tape. And then I got a phone call. And that breaking news, Washington Commander's rookie running back Brian Robinson Jr. was shot several times during an attempted carjacking in the district. Law enforcement sources confirming that Washington Commander's rookie Brian Robinson Jr. is in the hospital tonight after being shot multiple times. I want to say it was like 5 o'clock, around 5 o'clock, I think. Uh, he caught me. And he in the back of an um, ambulance. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you good? Like... I'm thinking he didn't got into a car wreck. I'm thinking he done wrecked this car. You know what I'm saying? He just got the car. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, um, he was like, no, nah, bro, I got shot. Oh, that was, that was one of the worst days of my life. And it's just, cause your, your reaction when you get news like that is go to them. And 11 hours away, we couldn't go to him at that moment. A former coach of ours had texted me and said, hey, have you heard about Brian? We you know what are you talking about? And uh, he said, well, you just need to, you need to call him. You need to see if you can get in touch with him. Man, what are you talking about? He was like, well, I don't want to say anything because I don't know it's true. I don't want to tell you something that's not true. Just call him and see if you can get him. So I call him, no answer. Text him, no response, which is pretty unlike him. And obviously, you start seeing stuff scrolling on Twitter um, and start thinking, okay, maybe this is true. So I try to call him again. No response. Try to text him again, no response. Uh, so I finally called his cousin uh, that was playing for us. And I said, you know, what's going on? And he said that he's been shot. Um, don't really know a lot of details yet. I just know that he got shot. Um, his mom, we're trying to figure out how we're going to get up there. And I said, well, tell me what I can do. And he's like, man, coach, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know. You know, after we're, we're waiting on information and everything like that, um, I reach out and I call him and he picks up. <laughs> Which really surprised me, but he picked up and I said, hey, how you doing? He said, oh, I'm all right, coach. You know, oh, I'm hurt a little bit. I said, you going to be all right? He sounds like coach, but God, you know, this is unbelievable. I said, I know, I know. I said, how are you doing? How are you all right? He said, yes, I think so. I said, well, have you talked to your mother? He said, no. I said, you want me to call her? He said, please, please call her. So I called his mom. I was at work, working a, a second shift. I was working all the time. And um, it was a number I didn't recognize. I was no answer to many of those. And um, I didn't have this coach number, you know, like program in my phone. So I received a message, you know, to give. I was like, the coach won't really call him. I'm like, what's up with that? It got to be something. So I called back and he told me, and it just didn't hit me. I mean, I don't know, I couldn't, I couldn't grasp it. I like, I don't know, I just could. So after he gave me the information, you know, I hung up, I sat there for a while. And I was like, I'm gonna stay and wait my shift out, I don't know. Then it hit me like, did this just really help? Then I said, no, nah, I'm gonna sit and wait till my shift then leave. And I was like, oh, you better leave. It's, it just, I couldn't register it. So I, as I walked out the door, you know, head to my car, just broke down like, this did just really happen. Like, somebody shot my child, you know. 
It was a moment when I tell you as a parent that you never want to feel. You know, at that time I didn't have any information. I couldn't get anybody. You know, it was still going through the motions. And, you know, he did tell me that he was doing fine. I was very, very um, happy to hear that. And uh, it was about an hour and a half later, and he said, uh, Coach, you can, uh, you can go ahead and uh, head down to the, uh, to the hospital. So Randy came, picked me up, we started driving, and, and during that drive, all I could think of was, man, this is unbelievable. And here we were, you know, less than, you know, six hours ago or eight hours ago, we were practicing. And now, you know, I'm headed to the hospital to see my guy. You know, it was, it was, it was just a hard thing to, you know, at that time to kind of, you know, put my head around what was going on. But I think, I think it came to grips when I saw him. You know, walking in and, and just seeing him there on the gurney, you know, and, and there was obviously some, some blood and, you know, some bandages and stuff. And, um, and it was like, you know, I just looked at him and I said, are you okay? He put his down, his head down. He said, "Coach, I'm hurt." I said, "I know, I know." He said, "No, no, Coach, I'm hurt. I mean, I'm, I'm hurt in here. You know that. That's." I said, "Hey, that's the unfortunate part of it." I said, "Yeah, but you know what, Coach? I thought this was going to help me get away from it, and, and it's just like it followed me." For so many of these young men, that play in the NFL is their opportunity to take another step, a step forward in life, and I could tell that 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 it had gotten to him. You know, he said, he said it too, he said, I'm hurt, my spirit's hurt. So it was probably two days before I finally talked to him. Um, and, you know, I could, I could hear the fear in his voice, not of, you know, not of scared about what happened, but the fear of, is this just ruined everything I've ever worked for uh, because of obviously where he got shot. and. And, and the, the possible damage that was sitting out there is, is just everything I've ever worked for, Coach. And now it's, is it going to be gone? And I, mean, I, I don't know. You know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell him. Um, but I just told him, I said, man, you, you, you worry about getting out of the hospital first. I stayed up. I stayed up that whole night um, waiting. Uh, waiting on the doctor to come in and tell me, like, whatever his good and bad news was. Before he tells me, I'm just disappointed. Uh, don't really know what's going to happen next. Pretty much that whole night, I waited up uh, after the incident the next day. You know, when he came in and told me, then I just just felt relieved. Still didn't really know like how how that how well that would go for me at the time. But I did have some type of relieved moment, you know, just to know like, you know, at least I'd be able to walk again. At least I'd be able to run again. You know, hopefully I'd be able to return and play ball again. It really had bothered him because he was like, I came here, you know, I'm going hard. I just got the call. I'm doing everything I need to do. You know, why this happened to He just had a lot of whys and, you know, he just couldn't understand. And I talked to him and I told him, you know, your life is already pre-planned. There's nothing you could have done different, you know, to make this not happen. If it was going to happen, it was going to happen. It wasn't meant to damage you, break you, or uh, end your career. I said, later, you have a story to tell. You know, most successful people have a story to tell, and you are one of them. I said, what's the odds of you getting shot twice? You know, bullets go straight through. You didn't get killed. He had the gun to your head in the beginning, you know? And these same guys killed somebody else. They didn't care about killing you. It wasn't meant. You know, everything happened was meant to happen. And, you know, it's only going to make you strong. We talking about gunshots. People die from gunshots. One shot anywhere. It can be in the most strangest place on your body and you can die from it. So to take two, 
no way to think that I'm not blessed to make it out of that. Just to think about recent Washington history, Sean Taylor. He took one shot to his leg, he didn't make it. And just being a another Washington player to get shot in the leg to survive. Can't help but you just think about how blessed I am to make it out of there. What update do you have for us on Brian? Everything's been very positive so far. He'll be seeing the doctors again today as well. And um, we'll just go from there. And as I said, there is no timeline. Man, I just needed, I needed them more than they needed me at the, at the time. You know, and I just, um, I wanted them to know that I was still open, you know, open to, you know, what we, we, what we had started working on, what we had started building you know, in the relationships that we had started building. I didn't want, you know, what I went through to just take me out of, you know, building the relationships that I was building and connecting with the people the same way, the same way I would connect with them. If something happens like Brian Robinson, like how do you guys kind of rally around kind of supporting him and also going about your business? At the end of the day, football does not matter at that situation. I care about his livelihood, care about his mental health, care about all those things. That's first and foremost. That's the type of energy I needed around me. So that's the type of energy I give out. You know, I want people to feel like um, I'm happy and I'm excited, even when sometimes I'm not, because that's the energy that's gonna reflect around you. And that was the energy that I needed. So I wanted to continue being positive, keep my head up high, even through the, one of the, the worst situation of my life. I'm glad that he can still be able to do what he loves to do. And that's to be a, a, a hell of a football player that he is and also just be a good teammate, be a, be a brother, be a son, you know, do, be, do, do all those things that he was supposed to do. They couldn't tell him then right then until they actually do the test. So it really like had him in a, a bad mental space, you know, other than, okay, I'm still alive and it didn't kill me, it had him in a bad mental space as far as his career, very bad. And you know, now, you know, he still said it bothers him, you know, just the fact of it, trying to, you know, cope with it. But as he started, you know, working out and moving and, you know, his, the process of healing was real good. You know, it kind of helped him mentally because he was in a bad space when it first happened. From the doctor telling me that I was going to come back and be able to, you know, play again, I didn't know how long. I didn't put a time frame on anything. I just went straight into my process. And uh, I was determined, focused, you know, every single day, getting better every single day. He, oh, he was determined. He was determined, and every day he had to stay in that house, he was he, he was miserable. He's always, always been determined. Like, no one can tell him no, no one can stop him, no one can tell him how he feel. It's a week or so later we talked, and you know, he's just said, well, Coach, I, you know, I, got, I accomplished goal number one. I said, well, let's find a new goal now. Let's set a new goal, what's, your, what's the next goal? He was like, oh, get back on the field. You know, obstacles create opportunities sometimes. Um, to be able to overcome adversity, work through it, be able to stay positive. And uh, I don't think anybody can be a great competitor if they can't overcome adversity. And I think the way, you know, B-Rob handled all that, worked his way back and got back in the lineup as soon as possible. Uh, I think he showed a tremendous amount of maturity in uh, being able to overcome that adversity. You can see a 
on the other field when he started to make his rehab and he would start coming back. And every day, right, I would just take a peek over to over there to see what he was doing. And every day there was something that I would see. I was like, okay, he couldn't do that yes two days ago. Oh shoot, he's now he's adding this. The, the rehabs guys are adding this. And so just the way he worked to get himself back. I mean, he put in a lot of time. We had to pay attention to him because if we weren't paying attention to him, he'd be running out there trying to get a rep or two on him. And what a sight this is. Weeks after being shot in an attempted robbery, running back Brian Robinson is out on the field right now. He looks like he wants to be on a football field as fast as possible. It was a process, you know, we just, you know, we still had ups and downs and we still going. That's the beauty of the whole situation, you know, the fact that none of it is perfect and it all won't feel well, but we still push through. I think week five, right here against the Tennessee Titans, I think Robinson will be back running the ball for the commander. First and foremost, welcome back to you, Rob. Hey. 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 Yeah, man, welcome back to you, Rob. We never knew that maybe, you know, he'll get that moment again, and I was just so relieved and so happy and, you know, He's worked so hard, and then for him to get that far, and then it's like, you know, like his dreams were shattering. So I was, I was really happy for him. Football is his life. He loves football, and I just didn't want it to be taken away from him like that. Hey, Rob, how we feeling, man? Feeling good, man. First game back, man. We ready. Good luck out there, bro. I feel like I was rewarded for, you know, all the energy and work that I had, you know, put into just my recovery. I was reward, rewarded by that, you know, you know. God gave me a chance to come back a whole lot earlier than I was ex really expecting to. If they told him that he'll be able, he was gonna do everything he could with it. Get back out on the field as soon as he could. At that moment, it just, you see how many people care, care about you and your presence and, uh, this is very special. It was it was awesome, and the just seeing the smile on his face coming out of that tunnel, it it was amazing. It was amazing. I can't believe this right now, bro. I can't lie. I can't believe it right now. Hey, we starting with a run, bro. I'm coming, bro. Just come out, bro. Let's get some going. Let's go. Brian Robinson is on the field. His first NFL touch is a handoff. Running left around the side. It was a sigh relief to see him run out the tunnel and play hard as he did first game or whatever. I was like, oh, wow. It's a wonderful feeling. I still slam your ass, Derek. <laughs> What's up, man? What's up, bro? You good? You doing all right? Yeah, yeah, you're good. praying for you, dog. Man, appreciate it, bro. Stay with you. you keep doing you. Right, right. Thank you. Oh, boy, man. Oh, yeah. man. Hey. 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 That shit came to the Y, bro. Huh? That came to the Y. Two years. I mean, he's gonna find a way, one way or the other. Even when it may not look like he's going to, or it's not, not looking good, he's gonna find a way. Uh, and that's just, you know, it just speaks even more to the, the person that he is. We always knew he was gonna be that guy. I ain't gonna lie. We always knew he was gonna be that guy. So two months ago, the kid is wondering, can he play again after he was shot twice in a carjacking attempt? And here he is in Soldier Field, taking it into the end zone. Great, you know, you know, just, just thinking about all the work I put in leading up to this point, and in the end, it was all worth it. But it was just somebody that day because when we woke up, he was like, "Man, I'm in, I'm back." He like, "I'm back." I ain't all the way back, but I'm back. He like, "I'm like 80 percent today." He just moved different, you know. He felt really, really good. He was in a good place. I wasn't necessarily surprised, you know, on that particular game because he had put the time in. 
I'm like, what you gonna do? He was like, I'm gonna go for 100. I'm like, all right, bet, show me. First drive, he caught that pass. And I seen it, I like, I seen it like in his, like in his posture, like, oh yeah, this one, this one be one of them games. Catch made by Robinson out of the backfield. Oh. He powers ahead! What a this gonna be a, this gonna be a, this, this, this gonna be the game. He gonna get 100. When you can physically run over somebody, a lot of people can't do that. Like, you're literally running over another human being. It's probably one of the toughest things to do. I was really excited that day. It just felt like I was just growing. Just felt like I was coming back into my own. I was like, yeah, man. That was crazy, though. It was crazy. Amen. You just understand this. Just understand this, okay? You win them. Every game has its own personality. You win them based on that. This game was going to be a physical, knockdown, drag out, whip ass type of game, okay? They're a hell of a football team. Give them credit. They're a physical football team. They tested us physically. We came out on top. Why? Because we just happened to be the better team, okay? Understand where we're headed. Understand what we're doing, and understand what it takes. Every game will have a different personality. <clears throat> All right, we've got a different team coming up next week. <clears throat> Enjoy this, and then we're going to refocus, okay, and get our asses ready to play some football. Now, I got a ball here, and the only reason I'm going to give the ball to him is because it's his first 100 yard game as a running back. Yeah. We outrushed them. 176 yards offense, oh, running, running the ball. It's a hell of a job. Yeah. Yeah. Hey y'all. Honestly, I've been wanting to say this in front of the team, but like, you know, since everything happened back in August, man, I promise you, like, everybody in this room have like shown me unconditional love, and support, man. Yeah. Like, yes, just to help man. me get to this point for real, man. I couldn't be more thankful for everybody in this room, man. Y'all, the people I turn to the most after going through what I went through, man. Just you know, to have this opportunity to do what I did today, man, I uh, give all y'all the credit, man. Thank y'all. My favorite moment of this past season was the big hat moment. Only because, like, you know, everything about that was, you know, while, while I'm still working hard and going out and competing and, you know, running for my first 100 yard game, uh, I'm still being able to just kind of just enjoy life and show personality and connect with people around the world just off of, you know, doing something that I thought was funny. And, um, you know, all of that, th those moments were special. Hopefully never have to get that phone call again, but I think it just adds to his story now. And I think it just makes what he did, even, what he's doing even more special. I mean, guy got shot and a couple months later, he's playing Rushing, going for 100 yards in an NFL game. I mean, that's just stupid. So, uh, but again, that's just, that's who he is. I mean, he's going to find a way one way or the other, even when it may not look like he's going to, or it's not, not looking good, he's going to find a way. Uh, and that's just, you know, that just speaks even more to the, the person that he is. Final question, one word to describe Brian Robinson. Tough. Persistent. Uh, competitor. Grit. There's a toughness about him. Oh, I hate him. <laughs> but I tell you the first word is probably relentless. He's just relentless. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I just feel like I can, I can you know, stand my ground against anything I'm up against. You know, if the battle finds me, I can fight it. And, uh, you know, that just can my mindset, you know, going into, you know, you know, playing running back in the NFL, you know. And I want to be one of the best. I want to be the best. So I just got to continue to, you know, create the right habits, you know, on and off the field and uh, invest in my time correctly. And uh, just sticking to my script, 
you know, everybody got their own ways, you know, to to being who they are. I gotta uh, stick to my script and and what what best makes me me. You want to rip it? I'm gonna let you rip it one time. Press the brake. No, don't press no brake. Press the gas. Right. No, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That was that was good, right? <laughs> 